as you can see, it is indeed midnight, which means, which means, uh, yeah, I, I watched all of the bowl games today, or rather most of them, not all of them, and, you know, and the FCS semifinals, of course, you know, of course I had to watch the FCS semifinals, we were talking about it, we're talking about these bowl games from this weekend, these early bowl games at least, um, and so this will be probably the, uh, third or fourth last, uh, there's only like a couple more videos left that I have to make this year, you know, for college, or out of this season for college football, not this year, this season, I meant, and what we learned during this week is that I, I, I just do not want to keep up with recruiting at all, you know, it is tiring to keep up with recruiting because so many people transfer, you know, Casey Thompson transferred, but Texas got to get another, you know, guy from Ohio State. Like Spencer Rattler, head to South Carolina. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders of Jackson State. Not only did he flip, you know, the number one overall recruit from Florida State. It, there was rumors that he, you know, Barstool was behind, you know, something too. So, you know, with some money, you know. Because apparently JSU and Barstool, you know, have a relationship. Like, because I mean, there, there, there's Barstool, you know, Twitter accounts of every um, school, you know, just about. So I mean, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, man. Like A and M, you know, at one point apparently had the number one, you know, at least at one point in the early signing period had the number one um, class. Like again, recruiting is a different animal. It is a crazy animal. And the transfer portal is also crazy. Like, I forgot everybody that transferred already. Like, so, like I, I, I'm, I'm just like, what? What's going on? <laughs> What's happening here, man? So, uh, yeah. But um, you, you're not going to be surprised at who is on the thumbnail tonight. And that is the man himself. Who not only did he break Joe Burrow's passing touchdown record, he also broke the single season passing yards record as well, and that is Bailey Zapp in the Boca Raton Bowl, in which they blew, in which Western Kentucky blew out App State. You know, my goodness, he, he was only 33 yards away from 6,000 yards passing too. Just an absolutely insane season. I mean, you know, this was. One of the few teams that played UTSA tough. They whipped App State in this bowl game. I mean, I, I, I'm just surprised. That, you know, like, I think a lot of people are still surprised the way their season started and the way their season has ended, you know, with this type of performance by Bailey Zapp, you know. So, I think I think Western Kentucky was like 1-4 at one point, and they reeled off seven straight. And then, you know, of course, they lost in the CUSA championship, and then they, you know, won this game today in Boca Raton. You know, crazy stuff. Congrats to you, man. I don't think those records are going to be broken for a while unless, you know, unless, you know, because I believe um, West Kentucky's offensive coordinator, one of the offensive coordinators, I think there was two, you know, um, I, believe, I believe that other offensive quarter went, went to some other school. I forgot what school it was. But, I mean, crazy, crazy stats, you know. And I read somewhere that that's more than, you know, Army's had in, like, 11 years. He, you know, man threw, for six, man threw for one more touchdown than Army has in, like, 11 years. Insanity. Pure insanity. Just... Wow. I hope these records stay stay the way they are for a little while. Because, I mean, I, I didn't think this was going to be broken in two years. But, I mean, my goodness. Let's go to the UFC semifinals now. Let's talk about that. Because we got some new blood in the championship game. And we got an old guard returning. Um, James Madison, North Dakota State. Fortunately, that game, you know, started on ESPN News because of the Cure Bowl. We'll talk about the Cure Bowl in a minute here. And it did a crazy, crazy 
you know, crazy ending of this game. It was fitting. Unfortunately, for JMU, this is their final FCS game. They lost to North Dakota State by only six points. And it was just a defensive slugfest, a defensive battle, a defensive slobber knocker. You know, that, you know, it was going to come down to the final play. And that's exactly what it, that's exactly what it did. You know, like, JMU had a punt block, you know, that led to a touchdown at one point. North Dakota State had a crazy interception that allowed them to get some more time off the clock. You know, really the only guy that stood out in this game was Hunter Lepke, you know, who was just, you know, he was just raw dogging the Dukes all night. Like, this man was running, this man was blocking, this man was catching the ball. I mean, he was just doing it all, you know, on Friday night. Doing it all. At the Bison, they're going back. The Frisco, going all the way back to Frisco once again. A lot of people are probably tired of that at this point in the in the SU circles, and you know some casuals on Twitter and stuff like that. You know are probably tired of seeing, oh wow, NDSU going back to the championship. Well, yeah, but you know you you all know that Frisco is going to be a wild time you know once again seeing Bison fans make the trip to their new Mecca you know it's going to be crazy now the team that will join them the Bobcats of Montana State yeah first time since 84 that they will be seeking a championship in the championship game I'm not sure if they made the championship before, you know, it, it betwixt the times of 84 and now, but they're, they're trying to win their first title since 84. That's what Montana State is doing. And what Tommy Malott, because I kept getting his name wrong for like three weeks, you know, not Tommy Mellett, it's Tommy Malott, you know, this dude has been playing lights out this playoffs. Remember. Montana State's original quarterback just decided to enter the transfer portal like an idiot. Uh, and not only did this, not only did Malott run for 150 plus yards, he threw for 200 plus as well. Just on point. Like he ran the ball 34 times. I don't think he needed to run the ball 34 times, but he ran it 34 times anyway because, you know, of some injuries and stuff like that to both the offense and the defense. But defense from Montana State was even better. You know, Pierre Strong came back in this game, you know, got a touchdown, you know, got a big 44-yard touchdown, but that was it after that. Chris Oladukin, you know, he threw for 300 yards as well, but he got sacked three times. He got picked off at one point. And, I mean, the Montana State defense, you know, kept the Jacks scoreless in the second half. Kept them scoreless in the second half. Kept them out of kept them out of the end zone on multiple occasions. You know, this defense is legit. We've been saying that this entire playoffs. We've been saying that the entire season. You know, here on the channel. You know, at least or at least the entire playoffs. I mean, I haven't really. You know, this is again finally been able to watch. You know, Montana State on actual television again. Um, so Montana State. You know. Y'all got to be happy. I mean, they filled the stadium up there in Bozeman. They filled that stadium to full capacity. It was snowing. I mean, it was just a hell of an atmosphere. Hell of an atmosphere for this game. And Montana State, you guys get to make the trip to Frisco to face North Dakota State on January 8th at noon Eastern, 11 Central. And it's going to be a wild, wild championship game. I cannot wait for it. Cannot wait to talk about it. Cannot wait to preview and recap this FCS championship. The 2021 championship is set. My goodness, who is ready? Because I'm ready. My goodness, man. So why don't we get to the bowl games here? I touched upon the Cure Bowl, and let's talk about it first. You know, there were, again, there were some other bowl games. You know, like I already mentioned, the Boca Raton Bowl. You know, 
could have put UTEP as the thumbnail because they had a crazy play, which I thought it was like a QB sneak, but instead it was a crazy touchdown pass as well. And then there was a play for Liberty in the Lending Tree Bowl, which was absolutely insane, like an insane interception. We saw amazing football plays the entire weekend. In the New Orleans Bowl that got finished up before I started recording here, you know, it was just chippy the entire night, like like, like a um, um, Louisiana defender just... He, he was definitely aware, and this is why targeting is a thing. You know, I don't like targeting for the most part, but this is why. You, you know, he knew, like this dude knew that this is supposed to be a fair catch. The Marshall, you know, kick returner, or at a punt returner, was supposed to be fair catching it. He waved his hands for a fair catch, and just, like, just no disregard for human life. This man just bulldozed him like it was nothing. Ejection from the game and I mean that game was just chippy the entire night like the refs had to get in between these guys multiple times you know these players multiple times crazy stuff in some of these other bowl games but the Cure Bowl wild beyond wild a thousand plus yards on offense for both these teams Coastal you know and kick block they failed on the two-point conversion that didn't come back to haunt them because they got another one later. And this was a back-and-forth game in which they could stop the ball from being run on them. They could not stop the run. The champs couldn't. And Lombardi himself, Rocky Lombardi himself, had three touchdowns. But, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Grayson McCall can slink it. We know this. You know, this modified you know option attack You know that people like to call it. Man can slink it four TDs on the night for Grayson McCall, you know. And unfortunately, unfortunately, you know, you know the refs were gonna do something in this game, and that's exactly what they did. Refs made a crucial mistake, you know. The clock, you know, was supposed to stop, and it didn't stop, you know. After you like, it was supposed to be like two seconds left on the clock, it did not stop. Clock went to zeros. Now, it's also debatable if that was even a catch or not. You know, Lombardi completed the pass. It's debatable, you know, if that was even a catch or not. If it wasn't a catch, ball game, you know. If it was, there still should have been two seconds, you know, for NIU to quickly snap a play. I mean, there were multiple, you know, reports and stuff about it. I mean, it's just, just insanity. You're, you're insanity. Like, you, get, you, got every, you got everything from, you know, People apologizing, you know, from, you know, different conferences to, like, uh, the refs admitting, oh, my bad. Uh, I mean, it's just it was just a crazy, crazy ending to this game. And then we move on over to Saturday. You had YouTube TV. Yeah, might have missed out, you know, <laughs> because of the whole carriage dispute thing. You might have missed out. Um, you should have gotten your antenna. You shouldn't have gotten your cable subscription. This is why antenna wins every time, baby. Um, you should have gotten your um, not legal stream ready. You know, should you should have gotten something ready. You missed three good ones here. You missed three good ones. Well, actually, it was just one game that was really good. The other two, not so much. Well, let's talk about the first one here because uh, a lot of people are going to be talking about this for the next couple of days, and that is the Celebration Bowl. Jackson State, South Carolina State, Dion, Prime, Coach Prime, Prime Time, Dion Sanders, Coach Prime, Leeton, his sons, his 11 and 1 Jackson State Tigers team into Atlanta, Hot Atlanta, filled to at least the limits of what the building can allow for this type of game because they don't want to open up the whole seating for some reason. You know, it is what it is. And not only, not only did a six and five, you know, again, six and five South Carolina State team who got beat by FAMU, the team that you know, you know, only lost to Jackson State by one, whined and cried to get their way into the FCS playoffs. I said it. I said it. You know, they whined and cried to get to the FCS playoffs. I'll say it again if I have to. And that was really the only reason they got in because the rest of the bubble was weak. So the bubble for the FCS playoffs this year, 
kind of weak. It's really the only reason they got in. The only other reason that FAMU got in. At Jackson State coming in with an aura of energy. An aura of energy that, that reeked of, you know, cockiness. Reeked of it. And, you know, I, I thought, you know, when, coming into this year, I said back in week zero, I said, I thought that the SWAC would be a bloodbath this year. I thought that the SWAC would be a bloodbath. But I also said, what I also said is do not, do not underestimate the MEAC because of what happened to the MEAC over the course of these past couple of years. I said, do not underestimate this conference. And what happens in the Celebration Bowl? Again, remind, reminder, again, not, not, you know, not just, you know, the years before and really, you know, in all honesty, you know, the MEAC should be 6-0 and in this game, but um, it's Central, you know, messed it up, you know, with a stupid excessive celebration penalty. But that's not the point. That pass game is not the point. The point is today, you know, Jackson State coming in with all of that hype, all of that momentum, all of that trash talk, they got smacked, punched in the mouth in this game. You know, Corey Fields Jr., Again, I said, you know, in the preview, and, you know, a lot of people were also saying, kind of shaky, kind of shaky on offense, you know, kind of shaky as pass, you know, because, he, you know, 19 touchdowns to 10 picks didn't look that good to me. It did not look that good to me. I mean, yeah, you can step up later in the season and stuff like that, but that, that kind of stat line, not going to cut it for me. And not only did he, you know, play lights out, in the second half of this game, this defense, beyond the point. They were beyond the point. They were ahead of the curve in this game. It picked off Shadur Sanders twice. It forced the big fumble in this game as well. All three of those turnovers led to 21 points for the Bulldogs. And three of those four touchdowns that Fields tossed was the Shaq Davis. And man, these Jackson State TVs. Oh boy, oh boy, just ugh, got burned three times, three times for touchdown. Absolutely, you know, absolutely, you know, just hysterical, hysterical. You know, yeah, yeah. Like I said, like I said back in week zero, I thought the SWAC would be a bloodbath. Instead, Jackson State just ended up dominating a particularly weak. Swack because I, I, I again like I don't know if y'all don't remember this if you do remember this in the HBCU circles Mississippi Valley State has like three wins this year for some reason like they beat the Swack West champion on November 27th you know but the week before the Swack championship game you know a lot of people consider you know Mississippi Valley State to be the worst team in FCS yeah that team but Thune Cookman absolutely terrible they were, they only had like what one win the entire season. Grand League and Southern, they're not there. They they're not they're not at the point to where they were. You know, a couple years ago when they were the ones battling it out to you know win the swag. They they aren't at that point. Why else do you think Hugh Jackson is at Grand League now? They're not at that point anymore. Alcorn State, you know, again they did not recover particularly well from their loss. It gets it's essential in the Miac Swag Challenge, and they couldn't, you know, they couldn't get it together, you know, they couldn't get it together to get a full season in, you know, to get to the Swag Championship, and they they lost too many games, you know, they lost too many games to get to the Swag Championship, and that's why Prayer View, you know, a Prayer View team that you know again, not that great, you know, it was not a, that great of a Prayer View team to get to the Swag Championship because they had four losses. And four losses before, you know, the championship game. So, a lot of people are going to say that the SWAC was a lot stronger this year, you know, and stuff like that. But I disagree with you wholeheartedly. You know, again, I, I, I said, again, you know, South Carolina State played a much, much tougher schedule than Jackson State. Much tougher schedule. I get it. Fambi was on there. I get it. Fambi was, was on that schedule. I get it second best team in a weak swag a really really weak swag like like Jackson State you know 
and Florida A&M probably should have played again because, again, the rest of the SWAC was just not up to snuff the rest of the season. Like, it was a two-team race from that point onward, you know. And, you know, unfortunately, Florida A&M could not catch up to Jackson State. That's why they had to go to the SCS playoffs, you know. And that was due to a weak bubble. So, South Carolina is a stingy on defense. They played their hearts out on offense because I mean, it was a little rough at first. It was a little rough, you know, for both teams at first. You know, Jackson State in particular had, you know, some rough, rough starts, you know, and they were struggling to put teams away, especially in the SWAC championship, too. Like, they struggled to put Prairie View away, you know. So, I, I'm not completely surprised that the MIAC is back on top again in this game. So, We'll see the HBCUs once again in August. Yes, I said August because we'll be talking week zero, 2022, baby. And we're going to be seeing that MEAC Spike Challenge once again, and it's going to be lit. So definitely, you know, set your calendars for August. <laughs> set your calendars for August, baby, because, I mean, I'm going to be talking. I'm going to be talking. The uh, MEAC Spike Challenge and also the rest of the week zero games, now the, now the rest of that has been completely confirmed yet but again that's not even the right time to be talking about that that's seven months away you know independence bowl independence bowl was also crazy i did not think the wayne mcbride would play but he and did he did play he did play i thought i thought he was injured but apparently he wasn't jaron hall was injured on the other hand you know and i was like okay so paler romney had to come in at quarterback and he did absolutely nothing but Tyler Algier carried the workload for BYU and you know despite the fact that he couldn't be stopped BYU's defense could not stop Dwayne Bride at all he could they, they couldn't stop him at all he had like 30 carries for like 100 nearly 200 yards worked his tail off in this game Dwayne Bride did and then Dylan Hopkins was just slinging it Sling it at all over this BYU defense as well. Like, this BYU defense, not only did they get upset, they couldn't make the plays when it counted. They couldn't make the plays when it counted. They got stopped on fourth down three times. Three times. One of them was one of the most obvious fourth downs you could ever ask for. A run up the gut. Like, why do teams continue to run up the cut, you know, when that just does not completely work? You know, maybe QB sneak, QB sneak more often works than not, but it was just a run straight up the middle when you know you're expecting it from the eye. Come on. Come on. Stop it. Stop it, BYU. Stop it. So now BYU's got to be lit. They got to be livid. You know, not only was this game played in ugly weather, they got to be livid that they had to play in Shreveport against a UAV team with nothing to lose. Like, BYU had everything to lose in this game. And they lost this game convincingly, you know. Convincingly, you know, with the, the way things went. You know, because, I mean, UAV imposed their will on offense on them. BYU was able to strike back and stuff like that. That's why this game was close. You know, that's why this game was a thriller for most of it. But when the going got tough... UAB did just a little more. UAB did more to win this game. They did more. And that's why that's why you got to applaud them. But don't worry, BYU fans. You know, you had a great season. You're going to have a great schedule in 2022. And I hope to be watching a lot of your games next year as well. Because, I mean, again, this BYU team is exciting to watch. It was definitely an exciting game. Best game of the day by far. And then the L.A. Bowl, the Jimmy Kimmel L.A. Bowl, and my goodness, Jimmy Kimmel, cringe. The entire thing was cringe. Whole camel, you know, up checking, you know, throwing up off of a, um, off of a bridge, you know, just weird stuff, you know, with like a big old sandwich, you know, and the announcers and stuff like that were like eating a big Jimmy Kimmel sandwich in the booth and stuff like that. It was just completely. Completely weird to the point where this, the the game really, you know, like there's not a lot to talk about with this game at all because um, Oregon State didn't do too much at all. They did not do anything in this game. But Cooper Legas, 
or Legas. I hope I'm saying that correctly because I'm probably not. Not only did he throw his first pass in this game, he threw that first pass to Devin Topkins and that went for a touchdown. You know, he read his first pass in the bowl game because, I mean, he was like the third string quarterback. Logan Bonner went out. You know, the other backup, you know, couldn't play. And so this guy came in. You know, this guy, you know, who really hadn't done too much at all. And he comes in and just starts playing his butt off. Playing his butt off in this game. Two touchdowns for him. The Utah State defense was on point. Again, the Beebs never got anything going. Never got anything going in this game. Like, I was just sitting here like, okay. Are you going to do anything, Oregon State? You're not going to do anything. Okay. And so that was pretty much the end of that. Like, the L.A. Bowl kind of ended it. It, it, it was not it was not a great game I'll tell you that much it was not a great game at all but yeah yeah that that was a def, I definitely don't want to see Jimmy Kimmel anywhere near a bowl game ever again like man man said he does not care man even said he does not care like like please somebody get somebody get a new title sponsor for this game because my goodness man such cringe. I don't. I don't ever want to see Jimmy Kimmel on screen because he's not even funny either. To me, he's not funny to me. Y'all might think he's funny, but I, I don't think he's funny. So yeah. So that's gonna do it for the um, bowl weekend for the FCS semifinals. We are going to come back to you all to well, actually later, you know, because I mean this video will be up in a few. And then, you know, I'll come back. Well, I'll probably take this, you know, take this time to push this to Monday, you know, the college basketball stuff. Because, I mean, we can push it to Monday if that makes any sense. You know, it is what it is there. And um, the NFL recap, unfortunately, because, you know, we'll have to talk about that in the recap. But we'll do the NFL recap on Tuesday. We'll do an NBA update, you know, on Wednesday. And then, you know, Thursday will be the hopefully NFL preview because I mean I don't know uh, with the NFL right now so with all that being said everybody I'm going to get on out of here and you know get some sleep you know because I mean we got a long day ahead tomorrow you know with the NFL and stuff like that and I hope all of you enjoyed your bowl Saturday the first bowl Saturday there's not too many bowl Saturdays that are important this year just this first one and the last two, you know, because again, one of those is on, or the last one, you know, I'm not, I don't know why I just said last two, I meant last one, you know, because, because the second bowl Saturday falls on Christmas and there's only one game on Christmas, so there's no reason to talk about that. Um, we're going to come back with college football around, you know, it'll be like around the same, uh, it'll, it'll be the week after this one. It'll be, um, it'll be, uh, Tuesday. You know, it won't be next, it won't be this Tuesday, but it will be next Tuesday. So, you know, um, we'll come back and we'll talk about the New Year's Six because there's a lot to talk about, you know, with these six games and everything like that. And, you know, I'll be keeping up with some of the bowls, trying to just watch something else, you know, in case, you know, things go the way they go at work and stuff like that, or, or with other engagements, other sporting engagements, you know, like college basketball, you know, because that's been going crazy right now. And with all that being said, you know, again, I hope y'all had a great bowl Saturday. Hope y'all enjoyed the FCS semifinals like I did. And, Again, have a good night. See you soon. And subscribe.